Okay, so this is my folding quadcopter frame that I designed. I had my previous frame that I put on flight test uh, quite a while back that it was an H style folding quadcopter, but it just didn't quite fold up small enough and the motors didn't overlap, uh, overlap like this, so I uh, decided to go ahead and change it over and so I designed this whole frame. So you can see, you can pull it out of uh, the bag or uh, whatever you carry it in and then to unfold it you just simply pull those out and then grab each side here and then there you go. Now it's ready to go. Uh, now if you measure from motor to motor then it's about 670 centimeters uh, so compared to like a 450 size quad or something this would be a 670 uh, so it's it's quite a bit bigger. Um, I use 11 inch props on it and just the DT750 motors they have enough power to carry it just fine. Now the interesting thing about this frame and one of the reasons why I had decided to switch over from my H-Quad is that you'll notice there's not a lot of wires besides this thing that's hanging off for the FPV stuff. There's not a lot because this board is a circuit board. So you can't really see much with everything put together. Plus I had to put this piece on to stiffen up the frame. But this entire thing, the KK board, I flipped around the pins and so you can see that it just simply unplugs and I was doing this to try to make it easy for other people to be able to go ahead and assemble it um, it was just kind of a fun idea the same thing with the receiver it just goes ahead and it snaps down right onto the board so all the wires are hidden inside the circuit board it tidies everything up it makes the whole thing a bit lighter and it's really great so I had to design this uh, board pretty special to be able to fit uh, this receiver and plus then I had to desolder all the pins and flip them over so it ended up being a whole lot more work than what I thought that it would be so you know um, I don't know, I still thought it was worth it. It was it was pretty fun. Uh, plus, I used to have a connection, instead of having to plug it in like this, um, which you can see kind of looks added in, I did have pins up front here that had the FPV connection, so I could ju just plug in the FPV camera, my little board camera underneath the GoPro, and then also plug in the video transmitter, and it would power the video transmitter and the camera, but then whenever I put on the GoPro mount, I had to push those pins out of the way. So, um, yeah, and plus there was a short circuit, so I don't know if you can see it from here. But the basically the wire trace inside there uh, came off, so now I don't use that anymore. But now, the thing that I said with having this as a circuit board can save a lot of wiring inside the board too. So all the speed controllers, they are all soldered to a chunk here and then the battery is also soldered to that. So it made wire management as kind of like a power distribution board. Um, but then you can route the wires straight up here and then the arms that I'm using right now, they're aluminum. Um, I actually prefer the wooden ones but the aluminum ones were a little bit lighter and uh, plus I had a kind of a hard landing from about 40 feet so <laughs> I went ahead and replaced the arms after one of them broke so yeah um, now this frame is great and I really like it it's definitely well I don't know if it's the best frame it's the most integrated frame that I've ever made having all the stuff already wired in and um, it's nice because it's really portable but it does have a couple issues which I'm actually about to make the second one now um, but 
you can probably see there that there is some bending on the edges and that's because of uh, torquing down the motor so that you know it, it doesn't really look like it's much of a problem but I was in class and so I asked a friend of mine to drill these for me and he did not do a very good job and got this slightly off-centered so whenever I tightened it down it was actually squeezing down more on one side than the other and almost all of these arms are like that because they have to be tight enough to hold the motor on um, but yet loose enough to uh, not squish down the arms too much and the problem with that was whenever you squish this down on one side then it makes it tilt the other way so I tried bending them back and getting the motors lined up right but just long story short it just did not work out very well and also I'm having the same problem um, down here I think because whenever I tighten down this screw to make sure that there's the uh, proper amount of friction because like here you can see the arm is held in pretty well um, so it's not going to like come loose in flight plus there's a second screw uh, or bolt here that I can tighten down slightly tighter than this one so that whenever you lock it in then it'll hold it in place and the problem is if I have each of these a little bit too tight it could bend this out and twist the motors at the end so I'm fixing that the next go around uh, I'm gonna go ahead and build another frame frame uh, just like this one except I'm actually ditching the whole idea of integrating in the KK2 and the spectrum receiver because I'm hoping to be able to get in an, um, an APM or the RG pilot um, system sometime because uh, the school that I'm going to they have a lot floating around right now so I'm hoping that they'll let me uh, borrow one but uh, plus I was concerned about the vibration getting through to the KK um, but I haven't really noticed any adverse effects as far as that goes which I was surprised because uh, some a few of the times the um, whenever I fly it before I had balanced everything um, it was kind of rough and you could see it in the video but yeah so I don't know it seemed like the KK has been fine just hard mounting to it I mean it's not directly mounted to the board so I guess it's got a little bit of give but I would think all the vibrations are coming straight through to it but, but yeah and plus you can see the GoPro is hard mounted to the frame there's no vibration dampening except for the thin foam tape that it comes with uh, the first video that I did with the camera on here, it it did just fine. I got smooth video, didn't have any problems. But um, yeah, like now recently, since I switched to the aluminum arms, then I got really bad video. So I don't know. And I went ahead and tried to uh, balance the props. And I mean, these are as balanced as I could get them they don't move at all on the thing but I'm using kind of crappy motors that I've had flying on here for about a year and a half so eh, who knows I got the flight test uh, camera set up that uh, David Windestall, um designed so I'm gonna try to put that on here eventually just with classes I've been kinda busy lately um, Plus, I'm working on a, another project that you can see up there for my car. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of my frame. I just wanted to show you guys because I've uh, I worked pretty hard on designing it initially and everything, and I haven't gotten that many flight videos of it. Uh, I was I was practicing FPV quite a bit on it, and so I didn't put the GoPro on there just in case, um, since I was just practicing but that's uh, just kind of a, yeah. Well, I'll show you some of the flight footage that I got. I'll go ahead and post that. But yeah, um, I flew at a pumpkin launch with this and it did pretty well. You can see that uh, the propellers are perfectly protected so they don't ever get hit. That was the main reason why I switched from the other way because a lot of frames that 
they'll fold out, but then they still have the propellers hanging off the end. <clears throat> and that's just taking up extra space. So the way I designed this, you can see that the front arm bends back and the motor comes straight to the end. And then the same thing on this other arm. So <clears throat> the front arm that folds back is actually protecting uh, this propeller on the back arm. Now, I didn't include the FPV camera in the length considerations because uh, I hadn't put it on there yet. And plus, I was considering just flying straight from the GoPro. Uh, but I had one incident where the GoPro camera decided to uh, go out on me. Um, and I just put it into auto level. I looked up from my screen and flew it back down. So it wasn't a problem but I just don't really care for that happening, so I just got a really cheap camera and I use that now instead. Um, it's definitely not near as good as using straight from the GoPro, but I've never had it black out on me, so that's a plus there. But yeah, so the main thing is, I just like that you can fold up a 650 size quad and basically put it inside a shoebox.